All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Gladys Ugwai, who is in Atlanta, Georgia. How are you doing, Gladys? I'm doing wonderful, John. How are you doing? Yeah, and Gladys is a professional and business strategist that supports through clarity of purpose and objective with an effective plan to execute with com confidence. And your company is Ignite Within is a transformative coaching and consulting firm. And Gladys is the author of the book, Dumped, Not Dumped On, How to Stop Reliving the Negative Impact of Rejection in Your Life, Business and Career. There you go on screen. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. All right, um, Gladys... Gladys, let's let's jump straight into it. Maybe we'll just start with, could you just give me the background or genesis to what drove you to write this book in the first place? I've been dumped. Right? So <laughs> I think we all have experienced that, whether that's with employment, whether that's with marriages or partner relationships, whether that's client relationships, we're talking about sales. You know, I've been in sales. And so who has not been rejected by a client and said, no, I'm going to buy from you, right? So we have all been rejected, didn't get the loan we wanted, couldn't get into school we wanted to get into, you know, all kinds of things that we have been dumped from. And I just found that there's this feeling of when you get dumped, it sucks. It hurts. Mm -hmm. Many times it's just not right. But here we are. But I believe, and from my experience, any time that you get dumped, regardless of who does that dumping on you, that there is opportunity within that. But we get so emotional with the rejection from being dumped, and we keep that rejection with us for so long, and long after the situation happened, that we get hung up in that and don't get to see that there is opportunity with rejection. And I just believe that we should see opportunity. You know, as a salesperson, um, I know I've been rejected when I was a sales executive and a sales rep and, and all of that. And when you get rejected by that client, it's like, oh my God, is something about me. And then you get to defining yourself by it. And then that inhibits you from wanting to go after that client again go after another client again go after a higher level client because you begin defining yourself by that mm -hmm. experience and i just think that we need to look at it differently and we're missing out yeah, no I, I i would totally agree and i think the sad thing is that uh and hopefully when people younger people listen to podcasts and your words of wisdom uh, the sad thing is that sometimes it takes years and years, and then we look back at an event that was kind of, that was had a huge impact on us when something happened, as you said, you know, we got rejected somewhere or another, and suddenly, it, the through the prism of time, we suddenly see, oh, that actually, I actually learned a lot from that. That changed in some ways the trajectory of my life or career or whatever. But it's years later when we realize it. It'd be great and if I we could, if we had a tool life. to realize it, yeah, in the in the moment. Yes, yes, we waste a lot of time on it, and a lot of times the, the company has moved on. They brought somebody else on board. You know, if it's a partner, they've moved on, and you're stuck, and it won't even get out into another, you know, relationship. You know, the client has got a, uh, you know, bought somebody else's product, and so it's just important to just. What is it that you need? What do you want? And don't allow that rejection or that situation to keep you from getting what you want. Your sales objectives, you know, which equates to money in your pocket to be able to live the life that you want to be able to live. We should not allow other people to keep us from whatever it is that we say that we want. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, learning the lessons and realizing that here's the thing, as you probably agree, Gladys, some of our greatest teachable moments for ourselves are is adverse are adverse situations. I mean, sometimes maybe it was a, you know, a boss that didn't treat you very well or whatever. And you look back and then you realize, well, I learned how not to be like that or something, whatever it is. But 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 our, our best teachers 
can and our best teachable moments can come from our most uh, adverse situations. Exactly. And then you don't even if you don't go through those adverse situations, number one, who are you not to go through them? Right. <laughs> but if you don't go through them, then how do you know what's good? Mm-hmm. Because most times we come out of those situ- situations with better. Yep. That's yeah. ab- absolutely true. No, I, it is absolutely true. And and it allows us to grow and develop ourselves. And it's like you said, I mean, if you go, if you if it's a, something as simple as you get rejected in a, in a sales uh, engagement, well, you know, you can either cry about it or you can say, OK, what could I have done better here? What lessons did I learn out of this? What can I take forward? Yeah, because in sales, most salespeople, when they get rejected, don't want to go back and talk to more clients. Mm -hmm. They begin to self-reject, self-sabotage themselves before they even go out. So they self-reject to avoid rejection from other people, that other client. Right. So I'm not going to go and talk to that client because I know they're just going to tell me no. I know they don't want to buy anything right now. So they self-reject before they even go out to work to make that happen. And so uh, we don't want to self-sabotage ourselves by focusing on the rejection of the experience versus the learning of the experience and the growth from the experience and then the opportunity to go after something bigger and better. But we get yeah, I, I I I love that. I love that the opportunity to go after something bigger and better. So that's embracing the embracing what happened and, and learning from it. And perhaps making changes that will allow you to be more successful. And I think that's something something you obviously talk about a lot in your book is is uh, is about change and and you know how you can use change proactively to to uh, you know to increase your rate of success. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you think you're not going to be rejected in the future, think again. Because change is constant. It's complex is constant. You can get tapped on the shoulder at any given point in time with some change event. COVID was one. Your employer can Mm -hmm. tap you on the shoulder. A client you've been working with says, you know, I don't want to work with you anymore for whatever their reasons. Partners, same thing. And so change is constant and you're going to get tapped on the shoulder with that change. But what I would recommend and what too often people do is ignore those signals that come with change. So we get those internal signals of change, you know, that anxiety you feel in, frustrated, sadness, anger, even joy and happiness. If you feel in joy and happiness, instead of ignoring that and just going 200 miles an hour with a fleeting thought about it, you know, really understand this, like, ooh, this is really, I kind of like this and say, why do I like this? And how can I bring more of that in to my life, into my business, into my career? Same thing with something where that anger and frustration is coming up because you've been hit with that rejection and it hurts. Well, what were those signals? Those signals of frustration, were there some signals that was telling you that I'm really in an environment that I don't like, that's not right for me? I'm really with clients that this high maintenance is not working for me. I'm really in this company that's not working for me in this relationship. It's telling you something that's frustration. Am I not doing something right? Do I not have the right solutions to sell this customer? Am I not having the right conversations? You feeling that. And so instead of ignoring those signals, tap into those signals. You see external signals. What's happening within the economy? Are you paying attention as a person as to what is going on around you, the economic crisis? What's happening with inflation and how is that impacting the businesses and the clients you're trying to go after? How is that impacting you and your financial situation and what you're able to do? But we ignore them and keep running our 200 miles an hour with those fleeting thoughts. And then we wonder why when that change hits us, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe I can't believe that client left me. I can't believe that company laid me off. I can't believe my partner left me. When really we had signals. And we I'm not even saying people missed the signal. I say you ignored the signal. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 agree, I agree completely. And I think this is a couple of things I want to come back on. Uh, mm -hmm. The first one is it always amazes me how much we resist change, especially at work. I mean, that, that always that always fascinates me because let's face it, in our everyday life, we're confronted by change all the time, like stuff is happening. Oh. But we cr but we cross the threshold, whether the physical threshold or the virtual threshold of work. And suddenly we want to control everything and we want to have everything work. And it's and I, I never understood that kind of disconnect is like if you know the cognitive dissonance between understanding that change is a constant when you're outside and then when you're in work, you're trying to control it. Right, right, right. Because who can you control? Only yourself. Only so we sense. spend all of our time trying to control the external and we have zero control over that. We only have control over our reaction to that external situation or that external circumstance. Because again, that quote says we're a product of, our, we're not a product of our circumstances, we're the product of our decisions. So what decisions are you making when you're in this environment of, where you are not in control and you you can't have any influence over what's happening and then you are suddenly claiming to be the victim of it. Mm, but how can yeah. you turn that victim mentality around to say, I'm not a victim. This is happening for me, not to me. I can open myself up. What is the opportunity that's associated with this? Because maybe yeah. that client that decided they didn't want to work with me was really not going to give me what I, I needed to get. Yeah, so we, yeah. have to, we have to really understand it and not just, like I said, just flip things off so that we can make right decisions and right pivots. You know, I say anybody can make a pivot, but you really want to pivot in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very true. Yeah. And it is, it is interesting. It is interesting what you just said there about um, ignoring the signals, uh, ignoring. We live, and we live in this crazy, strange world today where uh, everything seems to be set up to stop us ever spending time with ourselves, ever just spending quiet time thinking or analyzing things because we're constantly being bombarded by social media, emails, you know, texts on your phone, whatever. And it's almost like the, the, the popular culture is telling us, oh, no, 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 don't spend any time with yourself. You need to be connected all the time. You need to be interacting. You need to be, you know, it, you, you, know you need to be gathering followers or whatever, whatever it is. But the fact is, until you take a step back and some quiet time and actually examine what's going on and analyze it, you're never going to make any changes and you're going to be exactly running 200 miles an hour on your hamster wheel. Yeah, you are defeating yourself. You're self-sabotaging yourself when you don't do that. And I say those distractions and thinking about that a little differently are those distractions of always checking your email and picking up the phone mm -hmm. or any notification that happens and going to the refrigerator or whatever it is that you do to avoid doing what it is that you need to do, which could be sitting with yourself and reflecting. It could be working on a project. It could be doing a myriad of things, but you are supposed to be focused on something and then you allow all of those distractions. And, you know, and we say, well, social media, social media, well, we control we don't yeah. have to do that. And I say, think about the distraction is the, the emails and all that kind of stuff. That's just what you do when you're distracted. But what is the real distraction? The real distraction is because I don't want to sit with myself because I feel overwhelmed when I do that. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah, want absolutely. to work on forecasting and doing those kinds of things because I'm overwhelmed. I'm bored or it really doesn't matter to me. It's not important to me. That's really why we just move all of this 200 miles an hour to because we're either overwhelmed or bored or not doing something that matters to us. And then we have to figure out, well, why am I overwhelmed? And then mm -hmm. you fix that problem. But we fix yep. the problem by saying, I'm not going, I'm only going to check email, you know, <laughs> in the morning and 
at noon and in the evening. Well, that's not fixing yeah. the problem. What is the problem? Why am I overwhelmed? Why am I bored? Am I in the job yeah. I need to be in? Do I need to chunk what I'm doing? I'm trying to eat the whole elephant and I need to maybe chunk it. Yeah. But you absolutely. never figure it out because you don't you don't understand the problem, the cause mm. of the problem. Yeah, um, because there, there are even studies, I think, being done nowadays uh, on, uh, especially with younger people on, you know, zombie scrolling, you know, constantly scrolling on your on your phone, on TikTok and stuff like that. And it it, it provides a kind of dopamine like uh, boost to these people. So they become addicted to it. And that's why, um, you know, as you said, Oftentimes, instead of facing the problems, people look at a way of escaping with the problem. And sometimes, oh. like there, ask yourself: Have you have you spent a lot of time today zombie scrolling? Have you been on Instagram or whatever, just going blip, 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 um, instead of focusing? Oh, and and the trouble. Like, why am I zombie? What's that? I'm yeah. asking myself: Why am I zombie scrolling? Yeah. Why am I zombie scrolling? What is the reason why I'm sitting here doing this mindless thing? Because I've been overwhelmed all day and I just need some mindless stuff to do. Or, you know, I really need to, I really need to do something, but I really don't care about that. I don't care at all about that. That's what somebody else wants me to do. That's not what I want to do. Right? Yeah. And the other thing, the other thing I think is part of this, Gladys, and, and, uh, is that most people don't define what success looks like to them. Most people don't even think about what's my purpose and what I'm doing. They just kind of turn up and you know, do the day in, day out and, and move on without ever saying, like, where, where am I going? Where do I want to go? Why am I even here? What's my purpose? What are my goals? Yeah. Uh, and and if, you don't, if you don't do that, then yeah, you're just going to go through the motions. And doing what somebody else said they want you to do. Yeah. Well, somebody else is doing this, so let me go do that. Or well, somebody else said that I should try this, so let me go try that. I like to take my clients through a blank sheet of paper, a clarity you know, statement, a blank sheet of paper. What are all of my talents and skills and gifts? For what purpose do I want to use them? Who do I want to impact? How does that align to my values? And what do I want to get every day, get out of coming, getting up every day and doing that and figuring mm. it out? And really understanding yourself and not just doing what somebody else tells you to do or says you should do. Because I say that no one should know you better than you know yourself. But we allow other people to tell us what to do. Yeah, and we shouldn't yeah. do that. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. Or we fulfill roles that we think other people have defined for us or as you said uh, maybe we do things because we think that's what's expected of us and and we continue with all of the external never thinking about you know how it makes us feel internally and, and at the end of the day Gladys I, we, we've got a short life you deserve to have some level of satisfaction in what you're doing I mean it's the, I think it's something that we must do and we're miserable and guess what employers don't need miserable employees <laughs> They yeah. just don't. They don't want that because you're not going to be as productive as you need to be. So you really have to figure out why, if, if you all are in sales as you're listening to this, well, why are you in sales? What is it that you want to get out of that? Who are you wanting to impact by doing that? Are you in the right sales position? Are you selling something that you really like, what the heck is this about? But you out there <laughs> trying to convince somebody else to buy that when you're not even convinced yourself. It may be mm. that you should be in sales, but maybe that's the wrong area. What solutions? Like I said, who are you wanting to impact? You know, what problems do you want to solve? What is it, right? And so it's just, again, taking time out because you should be a priority and taking time out to figure yourself out. And quit letting other people figure you out when they don't even know you. Because most people, when they tell you what to do, they're real telling you what they would do. And what they would yeah, do has yeah. absolutely nothing to do with what you should be doing. What is your purpose? What is your direction? What does success look like to you? The three words that I hear the most from my clients is, I don't know. Mm. What do you want to do? I don't know. 
I want to be happy. Well, what does happiness mean to you? Well, I want to be successful. What does success mean to you? What is success? What does that look like? Because what sex John has does not mean that's the success you want to have. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And it's it's kind of funny, isn't it? Because uh, we often when when you know people are miserable in their jobs or their life or their relation, or you say to somebody who's miserable in their job, I say, okay, if you could do just anything right now, what would it be? And you'll probably get that. Well, I I don't know. I don't you say, know. okay, well, you're miserable. You're miserable doing what you're doing, but you don't know what it is that you would. But I can tell you what I don't like. I can tell you what I don't like. I can yeah. tell you what I'm not good at doing. But they can't say what well, this conversation is about. What are you good at? What do you want? Yeah. Not what you yeah. don't want. And it's it's mm -hmm. hard because that's not what they think about. You know, the National Science Foundation says we have up to sixty thousand thoughts a day, and of those thoughts. 80% of them are negative thoughts. Yep. And then of those negative thoughts, we repeat them 85% of the time. So we are always in this negative tape spiral, thinking about that rejection that we had, thinking about nobody's going to accept me. I'm not going to be able to, you know, get the sale, mm -hmm. all this negative stuff that we're talking about. And that's why we have to be very intentional. Mm -hmm. about what we're doing and conscious about what we're doing and stop living on autopilot all the time but being conscious yeah. being mindful being present you all probably heard all of those words before but really getting in and being awake to who yeah. you are yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love that. What a great place to end uh, because, yeah, because otherwise you're just outsourcing your life to fate, as I always say. Just if you don't if you don't take control of it, you're just outsourcing it to fate and whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but it's far better if you are the if you are the architect of your own life, obviously. Hey, uh, all of Gladys's information is going to be below this video, including a link to the book Dumped Not Dumped On, How to Stop Reliving the Negative Impact of Rejection in Your Life and Business. Uh, but before we go, Gladys, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Uh, be happy to. I come from a corporate executive uh, background um, with the number one technology organization uh, covering different uh, industries within that, different sales, operations, you know, financial, all of that. And um, they tapped me on the shoulder and I'm like, okay, now who am I now? Who is Gladys? Who is Gladys? Mm -hmm. now? And I had to go through this process of figuring out who I was. That's why I said I took myself through a blank sheet of paper. And I've always wanted to be in my own business. And that's how I birthed Ignite Within. Right, using my talents, my skills, giving guidance and direction, bringing out potential is something that I've always done uh, to impact the people that I serve, uh, being of value and being valued and making money in the process. Right. And so yeah, I do that as my nice. business. I work with corporate professionals who um, are disengaged with what they're doing, kind of hate what they're doing, but not clear about what to do about that. I help you to get the clarity that you need, the right mindset that you need to take that uncomfortable action to get what it is that you want out of your life, out of your career, out of your business. Yeah, listen, fantastic, Gladys. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Thank so you. thank you. Thank, thank you all for, for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you.